All right, folks. So what we have here is a Baofeng UV5R E+. What I wanted to do is a quick video showing an easy way to program these radios using Chirp, which is a software that you can download for free off the internet. It's an open source project that works pretty well. But before we do that, why don't you go grab yourself a nice cold one, come on back, and we'll get started. Alright, so hopefully everybody made it back. And I'm doing this video because I get a lot of questions about how to program these Baofeng radios. And as mentioned, we're going to use a program called Chirp, which requires you to connect this to your computer. I'll provide a link to Chirp below. And what I'm going to use is this USB cable that plugs into the Baofeng radio. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. There are two different types of cables that you can buy, real ones and fake ones. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but there is a lot of counterfeit cables on the market, so you want to make sure you buy a reputable uh, cable from a reputable dealer. This one has the FTDI chipset. They also make cables that have a prolific chipset. So when you buy your cable, you need to make sure that you install the correct drivers for the cable that you bought on your computer. That's a little bit beyond the scope of this video, how to install Chirp and get it working. But if you have questions, you can post them below. And I'll also post a link to a website called Miklor, I think is how it's pronounced. And they have a ton of information on the drivers, where to get Chirp, how to do the installation on your computer and get it working correctly. All right, we're going to go over the computer. We're going to get plugged in and uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, folks, we're actually back before we get over to the computer because there's two things that I wanted to share with everybody before we get started. The first is that I did a factory reset on this Baofeng. So it's speaking in Chinese. And I did that to put this in its factory original configuration. So we're going to be starting from a blank slate. And the second thing is, is I thought I would show, this is a jack for an external speaker and microphone. So when you open this up, you'll see that there's two plugs right there. And that is how you connect your programming cable. This goes in right like that. And you want to make sure that this is fully seated otherwise you're not going to get a good connection and their computer is going to have trouble reading your radio all right now we're going to go over to the computer all right folks so here we are and we're using a macintosh computer so this may look a little bit differently than your windows machine and uh we have chirp open and as you can see once you open it up it's kind of blank there's not a whole lot going on which can be a little bit confusing so my radio is hooked up through the usb port so one of the first things i want to do is i want to import a configuration from my radio to my computer and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to manipulate that configuration in this program it's called an image file so I'm going to go to radio I'm going to pick download from radio and then when I do that I get this dialog box now when I hit this drop down it shows all the different incoming ports I have on my computer yours may be different unless you're using the exact same computer and I'm going to go ahead and pick USB serial because my radio is connected via the USB port also, when I hit this drop down for vendor, I'm going to go to Baofeng because we're using a Baofeng radio. I'm also going to hit this drop down here and I'm going to pick the UV5R. We're using a variant of the UV5R, UV5R E+. This UV5R configuration setting covers a number of the variants. If you ever have any confusion about this, you can go to the Chirp website, which is going to be listed below, and then you can see what models of radios are supported and which model you should pick for your particular radio. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and then I'm going to be presented with another dialogue, dialogue box that's going to ask me if I want to proceed with the experimental driver. Because I live dangerously, I'm going to say yes. Next thing I get is some instructions specific to the UV5R. It's going to make sure that it's going to ask me if my radio is off, make sure that I have the cable connected correctly, firmly cor connected, and then uh, it's going to ask me to turn the radio on in step four. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that. And then we want to make sure that you're in VFO mode and we're tuned to a channel with no activity or to a frequency with no activity. I'm going to go ahead and click OK now to download the image. As you can see, it's cloning my radio. And two things are happening right now. One is I have a dialog box showing me a progress meter. The second is, is my TX light on my uh, radio is blinking uh, rapidly. So it's letting me know that both of these devices are communicating. Okay, there we go. So what this is showing are the empty channels or frequency stations that are in my uh, UV5R. Before we program anything in here, I did want to go over and take a look at the settings tab and just talk through a couple of different settings real quick. 
So when you talk a look at basic settings, you have uh, squelch adjustment here. There's some other things around your battery saver, um, timeout meter, timeout timer, I mean. Uh, one of the things I like to leave is display mode in VFOA. I leave that as the name, and this will display the name of the channel that I'm using. And then display mode B will show me the frequency. And this can be helpful if you are talking to somebody on a repeater. Maybe it's a linked repeater and they want to know which frequency you're using. If you have the same channel listed in both of your VFOs, then you'll know what the frequency and the repeater name are. Then you can play around with the lights and stuff like this, different colors, where you can enable or disable your Roger beep. I leave mine off because people find them annoying. I actually kind of like it, though. So here are some advanced settings. Maybe you want to set up dual watch. Um, maybe you want to turn on Vox. Vox allows you to use a microphone input without hitting your push-to-talk button. Just a couple of settings here. We're not going to fool with any of these. Um, when I go here to other settings, a couple of different things you can do is you can change your power on message to read a couple of different, different, different items. You can maybe put your name in here. Here's power on message one or two. Um, this has Fang too. Even though I did a factory reset, that's just what I named this radio a long time ago. For some reason, it t tends to persist. One of the other things I wanted to show here was that uh, you can actually disable transmission on VHF frequencies or UHF frequencies. So one of the things that I've done in the past is, is that I've programmed these to work as a scanner for uh, FRS and GMRS uh, frequencies. It's uh, something that you cannot broadcast on. It's against the rules outlined by the FCC with the Baofeng radio. So if you program these stations in here, an easy way to ensure that you never transmit on those is go ahead and disable that feature here. That way you'll be able to receive on those channels, but you won't be able to transmit on them. If you do make this configuration change, none of your UHF frequencies that you program in will work. So there's another way to bypass that, and we'll take a look at that as we continue to program the radio. All right, we're going to go back to the settings. I'm sorry, back to the memories tab. We're going to go ahead and we're going to just import some memories in here to show you how easy it is to actually program one of these radios. So one of the things we can do, if you go over here to this radio drop-down box in your toolbar, when you hit this, you can actually import from different uh, data sources or you can import from a stock configuration. So one of the things that we'll do is, is that maybe you live by the water and you want to import your U.S. Marine VHF channels. I can just go ahead and I can pick that. It's going to prepare the memory list. It's going to be right here. I can make some changes if I want to import these or not. I hit OK. And then now all those stations are programmed into my radio. So I have the frequency. I have the name. I have any duplexing configurations if necessary or offsets and also have the mode over here, and then a power. Right now they're, they're set for high. I could switch them to low if I wanted to. It's a pretty simple thing to do. Okay, another configuration that I wanted to show you guys is that if you did decide that you wanted to import from a stock configuration and bring in your FRS and GMRS channels, it's pretty easy to do. Now what this will do, unless I change the numbers here, like I could come down here and I could say, let's go ahead and add 10 to that. Let's add another 10. That way I'm not going to overwrite. Eh, maybe i got to add 10 more. There we go. Now I'm not going to overwrite any of the marine channels that I programmed into the, into the system. So if I scroll down, I can see my FRS channels start right here at 31. Now one of the things I can do here to disable the ability to the TX on these channels is if I come over here to duplex and I hit this, I get a drop down, I can turn this off. And what that'll do, it will prohibit me from the ability to transmit on these. I'll be able to receive, but I will not be able to transmit. And so that's kind of important if you choose to go ahead and program these stations into your, your radio. All right, the last thing I wanted to show you is how you can easily import repeater information into your bow thing. So go to import from data source. We're going to go to repeater book. You should really take some time to check out repeaterbook.com. It's a great website that is full of repeater information across North America and worldwide. So whenever I travel anywhere for work or for fun, I'll usually go over to repeaterbook. And then what I'll do is I'll import some repeaters for the location I'm traveling to. And I can just do a quick import. And then I easily have a bunch of repeaters that I can talk to or listen to while I'm out of town. So you can just come over here and you can pick any state that you want. Let's just say we are going to... Oh, I don't know. Let's say we're going to Oregon. And then I would hit this drop-down box, and I would just pick a county. Let's say we're going to Columbia County, Oregon. 
And then I had the opportunity to pick some different bands. Now the Baofeng only operates on two meters and hundred and I'm sorry, two meters and seventy centimeters. So I would just pick the bands that I'm interested in, hit OK, and then what's going to happen is I'm going to get a pop up. So there's only only three repeaters in that county. Let's go ahead and hit this a few times so we don't overwrite any configurations that we currently have. And then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to say import them. And then we scroll down, you can see them here. Let's go ahead and add some more just because that wasn't a whole lot. You can see I'm playing around with this. Let's say we're going to go to Ohio. And I don't really know Ohio very well, but let's just say we're going to Brown County, Ohio. We want to get some two meter repeaters. There's only one. There's only one. Sorry, guys. This is where we're going to import this into channel 65. Hit OK. Scroll down to 65 and you can see it there. All right. The last thing that we have to do in order to make sure that these get over to the radio is I want to come over, hit the radio drop down, and then I'm going to pick upload to radio. This is going to ask me for the same configuration settings like it did last time. They're locked in based off the type of image file that this is. I'm going to hit OK. We're going to run through the same instructions as we did before. I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to hit Yes. And it's uploading to my radio. And now I'm getting a receive light instead of a TX light. So my LED is blinking green as it writes to my radio. And with that, we're done. We're going to go back over to the table. We're just going to take a look so you can see if the configurations took effect. And uh, we're going to wrap up this video. Thanks, everybody. All right, folks, we're back to the tabletop. We're going to take a look at this radio, and we're going to see if the configuration change took effect. So one of the things I forgot to do, and we're going to go ahead and do that right now, is that I forgot to change this from Chinese to English. It's a relatively simple thing to do. Let me just go hit the menu button. And I'm going to go through the settings. So here's voice for Chinese. Just hit the menu button again, it drops me down. Hit the up arrow, I can turn it off, or I can go to English. Hit the menu button again to go up to the voice setting. Hit exit, and I should be good to go. Let's go ahead and test that. There we go. So the other thing I want to do is I want to go over and I want to switch to channel mode, or memory mode. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit that. And then I'm going to go up to my A frequency. And then here are some of the repeaters that we went ahead and we Seven, and we programmed one, into the six, five, to the six, radio. Zero, these five, say C nine, because these are five, the channels five, that we set up five, for five, marine frequencies. Five, 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 Here's some of the one, GMRS five, settings four, that we had. And here are the FRS four, settings. Four, four, so in a nutshell, it's uh, how you do it. Go ahead and get yourself chirp and that programming cable. Go ahead and play around, and uh, you can program your radio quite easily, as you can see. If you have any questions, post them below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks, everybody.